This next build is a Spectral Helix Onigoroshi Berserker. I'm not recommending that you play this. I'm going to play it. I'm not going to recommend that anyone plays this explicitly. If you don't know what you're doing, you will die. You will die to degen, you will die to not knowing how to set up your gear properly, you will die to not knowing how to set up your overleech. There's nothing about this build that is beginner friendly, but it is one of, I believe, the best ways to push your atlas early while getting XP without dying. In fact, it is crucial that you do not die while playing this build. If you die, you'll find that a lot of fights are very difficult to salvage. The gear that you're seeing in these clips is actually much worse than I have planned for day one. Some major changes on the tree have made it much easier to get this thing started. You no longer need to run Zof's Blood because of the new placement for Avatar of Fire. You can build much more defensively because of masteries allocated on the tree, and the damage got a significant spike because of some of the masteries for projectiles. Let's get into it. So the core unique feature in this build is an Onigoroshi. No matter what people tell you, I don't plan to farm this. The best way to get this sword early on is by buying the cards. Lastly, the cards were going between 1 to 2 chaos each on day 1, so that means the sword should cost you less than 50 chaos. Of course, this means you'll probably have to do 27 separate trades. That is more than worth it to get one of the strongest early game 6 links in the whole game. The only other core unique I have in here is the fledgling. This is another one of those uniques that isn't available early day 1, but should be available by the end of day 1 or maybe by the end of day 2. Either way, you can just run without it, but it does give you a pretty significant boost to your DPS. It is a guaranteed drop from Heist, and this thing tends to go for, again, from 1 to 2 Chaos. It's not expensive. A Replica Conqueror's Efficiency is the third unique I'd recommend using. It gives you all three things that you want. Skill Effect Duration is not that important, Maximum Rage is a pretty significant boost to your damage, and then the non channeling skills have 9% to mana cost is actually really helpful for getting a preload Spectral Helix. Otherwise, every other piece of gear is prioritizing life. This build gets a ton of armor, a ton of life, and a ton of max res. This lethal pride I have in here is totally optional. I'm expecting to get Intimidate when I roll this, but honestly, a rare jewel might be better early on anyway. The flask setup is kind of important. So these three flasks are basically mandatory. The Hell Life Flask is something that's crucial when you use a Petrified Blood build. This can keep queuing no matter what. So let's say this has a base duration of 12 seconds, which it won't next patch, um, and you are running through a map and you use this flask maybe like 10 times as you're running through the map. That means this thing will actually last for 120 seconds, even though you won't have a little bar taking underneath your flask. That's how it works with Petrified Blood, as long as you never max out HP. The Diamond Flask is just a big damage flask. Onigoroshi has really good base crit, so Global Strike Multiplier is really great. I'm gonna run Surgeons on here. And Writhing Jar is actually really good too. Unlike Slayer, you don't get Overkill Overleech, so this doesn't really help with Overleech, but this is really useful for right before you start a boss. Killing these worms can proc her Embrace, her Embrace is the buff you get when you ignite an enemy with Onigoroshi, and this ends up being the majority of your damage. If you don't have this up when you preload Spectral Helix on a boss, you won't have that much damage. The last two flasks are flexible. I'll probably end up opting for a Silver Flask and a Quicksilver. I already have a really high armor value without calculating the new determination and without using any sort of flasks. So Fizz Mitigation isn't really much of a worry on this build. Spectral Helix gets linked to whatever damage supports you're using. Bloodthirst is probably the most interesting one. It scales with how much life you have, and I'm trying to build more life. Much more than 7k. It's not sufficient. My gear isn't good. Tornado is super cool. So, Tornado basically doesn't scale because it's reflected damage. In other words, Tornado is best when you have a skill that can hit roughly 20 times over the course of 2 seconds. Assuming you're using no duration modifiers. My Spectral Helix is hitting 6 times per second, however it should be able to hit the Tornado multiple times, assuming the Tornado doesn't have a tiny tiny hitbox. I should be hitting about 20 projectiles in roughly 1.5 seconds, which should line up well for the cast of Tornado. The math has been rough to estimate, but in short, with about 700k as my average damage, I'm getting about 20 million extra damage on a single Tornado cast. It roughly averages out to be about 5 million extra DPS. But this is one single click I'm using that gives me 20 million overall damage. Just as a side note, other builds that might be good with Tornado include Spark, EK, Cremation. Of course, that's a non-exhaustive list. Otherwise, in my helmet, I'm using Blood Rage, which is also mandatory to get your degen going. Endearing Cry, which will give you Endearance Charges and give you more regen when you kind of want it. Although Recovery isn't an issue with this build. And Ancestral Protector, which gives you more attack speed. Because of changes to Mastery, you can now run Determination, Petrified Blood, and Define Spanner without any issue. Um, you still have a decent amount of mana left over, just in case you can't get minus mana crafts on your rings, or you can't get a Replica Conqueror's Efficiency. The second aura setup is with Arrogance, and in my Arrogance setup, I'm running Vitality, Precision, and Herald of Purity. Again, because of reservation changes on the Mastery Tree, you can run both Vitality and Herald of Purity, something you normally can't do without a lot of investment. Finally, your body armor is completely open because you don't need another 6-link. I'm running an Assassin's Mark with Arcanist Brand, Wave Conviction, and Combustion in one set of links, 
and then I'm running Berserk as my burst with Vol Molten Shell. The tree gets really interesting, but I'm gonna go through the Ascendancy first. You're taking, believe it or not, Crave the Slaughter and Rite of Ruin, which gives you a ton of degen for a lot of damage, Aspect of the Carnage, because it's the best generic damage node in the game, and Defy Pain. So before we continue, I want to talk about degen. I've tested this, obviously, as you can see in the videos, and degen is not an issue, for three reasons. Firstly, you get to run an Arrogance Vitality setup when you aren't hitting anything. This gives you enough regen to counteract the base degen of Rite of Ruin when you're charging at Rage using Chain Hook and Hydrosphere on bosses with downtime. Things like Cirrus before you start your four ways, Shaper, Elder, whatever. The second thing that's helping you with degen is Overleech. Petrified Blood, as long as you do not reserve over 50% of your life, will allow you to Overleech. In other words, you can keep your leech rate going for up to 4 seconds as long as you're hitting something. And this is multiplied further by Defy Pain. So Defy Pain, when you get hit, gives you a Defiant stack. And each Defiant stack is actually giving you more overleech. So you end up with an insane amount of leech rate as long as you're getting hit. Now, you don't really need more leech rate unless you're getting hit, which is great. The other thing about Defy Pain is that people are quite worried about this take reflected physical damage equal to max life when you hit max defiance. The truth is you rarely hit max defiance, and because of how much armor you have and physical mitigation you have this league, this really isn't an issue. I used to path towards reflect notes, you don't need this anymore. The third thing helping you with degen is having a permanent life flash ticking, as I've already mentioned. Now, I used to run a divine life flash because of buffs to life flash, you don't really want to run a divine life flash anymore. You'd rather run a hallowed life flash, which has longer duration and actually recovers less. So this way you don't end up regening too much when you have a life flask running and you aren't hitting other monsters. Despite what POV says, you never actually degen. Because her embrace is only on when you're hitting monsters, and when you're hitting monsters, you'll have overleech. You'll have right of ruin degen during downtime, but this is mitigated by both vitality and with the life flask that you can have permanently ticking. And then when you finally do get hit, you'll have defiance, which is increasing your maximum leech rate. It's actually an insane amount of recovery, and recovery is one of the best defenses you can have. The rest of the tree is disgusting. So Avatar of Fire has been moved down to here now, which means that there's natural pathing here. In other words, you don't need to use Zos Blood to get full conversion to fire. I'm getting Magmatic Strikes just for some extra fizz added as fire. These aren't important nodes, but most importantly is the Fire Mastery, which is giving you 40% of fizz convert to fire. The rest of my conversion comes from Gloves. This can be a crafted mod, it can also be a temple mod. And now we're choosing to get Prismatic Skin. I prefer to go for maximum cold res because I think there's slightly more source of cold damage I tend to get hit by. You almost never want to take maximum fire res because there's very little source of fire damage in the endgame. Lightning's also good, I'm not sure if I want to take it or not. Then over here I have Soul of Steel which is giving me another source of max res and I'm taking the Determination Mana Reservation Efficiency Mastery. This is what's letting me run Determination on my mana alongside all those other auras. At pathing over to Called Arms to get free Endurance Charge Generation, this is big. You have a great amount of low investment life reservation efficiency. And this is why I can run Herald of Purity on Arrogance alongside Precision and Vitality without reserving more of half of my health, which would have, in previous leagues, screwed over your Overleech. Down here, I'm taking Lava Lash, and I am taking the Covered in Ash. You'll tend to get hit fairly often, especially in the four ways, and given damage on the end of day one or start of day two, you actually might get reasonable value out of this. The sword cluster down here has been nerfed, but this is disgusting. You're getting frenzy charge generation for free on bosses and then you have blood rage taking while you're mapping. Now you have free frenzy generation without getting an anomalous blood rage or crafting frenzy on chest. This is huge. Up top over here I'm taking this cluster for 10% maximum rage. Iron grip is actually a pretty significant boost. It's something like 11% free DPS. And then I have a bunch of life notes here. The silent life wheel, although it's nerfed, is still great for this build and then I get the flat life from this mastery. And finally, these two sets of nodes are the sort of coup de grace for this build. The first one is that I'm getting Longshot. Longshot got a slight buff, but it also got this mastery, which gives you more projectile speed. This helps out your clear immensely, and on bosses you can take this out and swap this out for less projectile speed. The other set is Lethality. Lethality used to only apply to bows, but now it also applies to projectile attack skills, so Spectral Helix. And it gives a ton of crit, crit multi, and even better, it gives you knockback. Most builds don't want knockback. Spectral Helix, especially when you're using Farshot, loves knockback. In fact, you even have the chance to hit a mob four or five times because of knockback. It's a momentum-based build. It's kind of like Isla RF in the sense that when you're mapping, you never want to stop. Except this can also boss really, really effectively. On bosses, you want to pre-gen your rage using a Hydrosphere chain hook setup in your weapon swap. So in a four-way encounter, imagine you're doing the formed. You want to drop your totem, pop a worm flask, kill those worms to proc her embrace with your preload, and as the boss is spawning, you want to throw out your tornado and then start attacking. 
What will happen is that the boss spawns into a flurry of spectral helix projectiles, as well as a tornado that's triggering all the way through. You don't want to use any other major cooldowns here. The first boss should die before having to use anything else. As boss 3 spawns and a second boss is already available, you want to be using Berserk at this point. With your Berserk, you ideally want to be killing both the second and the third boss. For the last boss, you will no longer have rage. But that's okay, because there's only one boss left, and dealing with a boss as a standalone during a 4-way encounter is actually really simple. The damage is significantly understated. Special Helix should be hitting roughly in the range of 2-3 to three times. So this at minimum should be hitting for probably about 10 million DPS. You combine this with the Tornado, which is adding another 5 million DPS, and you should be at about 15 mil DPS. There is one weak point to this build. When you are not hitting anything, degen hurts like a mother... As far as leveling goes, I have a sub 4 hour Berserker run uploaded on my YouTube, I've linked it in the description. But generally you can use any sword base, because it's relatively high attack speed, go for Spectral Helix at level 12 and level with that all the way through. As you enter the early endgame, you want to be using Terminus Est. It's fairly interchangeable, you can see you do lose a significant portion of damage, but this is plenty for the early endgame. More importantly, my tree doesn't take any one-hander notes, so you switching between a two-hander or a one-hander is totally fine for this build. One last time, this is probably the least new player friendly build I've ever thought of. Don't play it unless you're really comfortable with knowing all the ways in which you can die. But once you have that down, this thing can blast.